In the previous videos, we have learned about average, we have learned about arithmetic mean, and in this video tutorial, let's discuss about range. Suppose we have this data set, and if it is asked to you that what will be the range of this particular data set, then what you have to do is first find out the minimum number, the minimum or the smallest number from this data set. Now you can see that it's 1, then you have 0, then 2, then 3, then 2, 6, 8, 10, 12, 12, 13. Okay. The best way would be, you know, always would be that you first arrange them in the ascending order so that the chances of making mistakes in finding minimum number and then the maximum number is very low. If you arrange them in ascending or descending order, then that will be completely, you know, that will be very good. Anyways, you can proceed on without even arranging them in ascending and descending order, but you'll have to be very careful. So in this case, you can, you will see that the minimum number is zero. So you'll write zero here. And in this data set, the maximum number is 13. Okay. And you'll write 13 here. Okay. Now you have to calculate range. So range will be, range will be maximum number maximum number minus minimum number so this will be 13 minus 0 equals 13 okay here we have another data set and in this case if you have to find out the range then first you'll find out the minimum number of this data set and minimum number will be what? 5, 5, 20, 15, 10, 15, 30. Clearly, 5 is the smallest number. So minimum number is 5. Then maximum number. Maximum number will be 30. In this case, you have 30 only. Okay. Now, if you're wondering that, hey, we have 2 times 5 here then still you need not to you know worry about how many times a particular number is occurring in a given data set that is you don't have to bother about the frequency of occur occurrence you only have to look at the values okay even if 30 was 10 times then also you'll take maximum number as 30 only the number of occurrence of any given number or the frequency of a particular number in a given data set should not bother you when you are selecting minimum number and maximum number. Now the range will be, range will be maximum number that is 30 and minimum number that is 5. This will be 25. Now, what does range tell us then? We have seen here in this case and in this case, we, we learn how to calculate the range then what exactly does it tell us? Well, when we were learning about average, then we discussed that in, in order to calculate average, you can use three ways. First was arithmetic mean, right? This one we have discussed, then median, and then mode. These are some of the ways to calculate average. Uh, while we have learned about arithmetic mean in our earlier videos, we haven't discussed median and mode until now. So until now we haven't uh, discussed this. We'll discuss this in our future video. But average tells us average of any given data, any given data set tell us about the central tendency, about the central tendency. That is, that is central of the data, central of the data. Okay, average tells us about the central of the data, whereas range tells us, range tells us the spread of the data, the spread of the data. Of the data set of the data set 
In this case, this would be data set. And these two are actually two features of any given data set, center of the data set and spread of the data set. While you'll calculate central of the data set using arithmetic mean, median or mode, you'll calculate spread of the data set using range. So spread of the data set tells you that how spread out, how spread out, how spread out your data set is. Like in this case, the range is 13, okay, and the values in this data set is very clear to you. You can clearly see that you have minimum zero and you have maximum 13. So when you will calculate it when you got range that is 13, it gives an idea of the spread that how far it is spread that uh, what would be the difference between the minimum and the maximum. So in this case, it was 13. In this case, it was 25. So you'll say that, hey, since in this data set, the range is 25. So it means that if I compare to this one, then the difference between the minimum and the maximum in this case is much larger, right? Let me explain you with uh, some real life example. Let's say that, let's say that we have this room, okay? We have this room where party is going on. This room is a hall and let's say that we are preparing a data set of ages of ages of all the people present in this room and let me assign some arbitrary you know variables that are representing some number let us say a b c d e f and so on okay so on. let it be last one be x only okay now Someone tells you that, hey, you know what? We have this data set. These are some arbitrary uh, variables we have assigned to the ages for all the people, uh, you know, uh, present in this room where A, B, C, D, E, F until X. This is ages of people uh, present in this room. And if someone tells you that the range of this data set is, if the range of the data set is, let's say only 15, if the range of this data set is only 15. Now what does it tell us? It tells us that if the range is 15, we don't know the values. Only some arbitrary variables have been assigned. We don't know the actual values. So if someone asks you that what will you conclude from this uh, data set and the given range, you will say that hey, that's very simple. You know what? The range is 15. It means that maximum age minus minimum age is actually what? 50. I don't know about maximum age. I don't know about minimum age, but you know what? What I can conclude from this? I can conclude that the age difference, the age gap is not too much, okay? The, the difference between the maximum age and the minimum age is 15. It means that, you know, people are, you know, almost of the same age group where the difference is only 15. Okay, let's say that the range was, the range was, the range was 50, not 15, but 5050. In that case, someone asks you that, what will you conclude now? You'll say that, hey, you know what? Actually, the maximum age in this case, minus minimum age in this case, Is actually what 50 it means that almost pe people of two generation maybe people of two generation are present there right so uh, in this case people were almost of you know very the the age difference was not too much but in this case it is 50 that is the age difference is too much that means in this particular room people present are you know very younger also and in comparison to in comparison to them, people are very older also, right? So this 50 and this 15, the range gives you an idea of, you know, the kind of, uh, not the kind of people, but, you know, of what age people are 
present in this particular room. That what is actually the difference? That's what the spread out is. How spread out your data set is. It gives you an idea. While in these two examples, in this example and in this example, you were aware of your data set. That's why you can quickly tell you that, okay, the range is this one. I can look at this data set and you know, tell that, okay, we have five here, we have 30 here. And in this case, we have zero here and we have 30 here. But here, we were, you were not having any exact values. The only thing given to you was that this is a data set and A, B, C, D, E, F, G, these, these are some um, um, variables assigned, some arbitrary variables assigned for the ages of people present in this room and the range is 15. So on the basis of the range only, you can conclude you know, about the age difference or the age gap of people present here. That's what the spread of the data, spread, how spread out your data, uh, data set is.